Hi everybody! So, what is a shader? A shader is a small program that runs on the GPU of your computer and allows you to achieve video effects that you could not achieve with standard Max programming. If you don't know absolutely anything about shaders, I've created a written tutorial that will introduce you to how to create a shaders in Max and will explain you all the basics about shader programs. So you can check the link to the tutorial in the description of this video and if you don't know absolutely anything, I encourage you to do so now before going on with the video. Okay, so now I assume that you know what is a vertex shader, what is a fragment shader and what these two programs are for. Okay, so the first topic that I would like to introduce when talking about shaders is how to create illumination simulation, so light simulation inside a shader. You could ask yourself, why do I need to recreate the light simulation when I already have objects like JITGL material that already give me a nice light for my objects? Well, the answer is that if you want to implement some other shader effects like depth comparison to achieve some special effect or something else, you may also want that your object is still illuminated. And if you attach a shader to a geometry, all the default light calculations that uh, the fixed pipeline does are not performed anymore, so we need to recreate them manually inside the shader ourselves. So first of all, let's see which type of lights we have inside Max and in general inside OpenGL. The first type that we have is the directional light, where all the rays are considered to be parallel because the source, the light source, is considered to be infinite far from our geometry. So for example, it could be like the sun or the moon, something that is so far that we actually consider all the light rays to have the same direction. The second type that we have is the point light, which we can consider like a sphere that emits light in all directions. A particularity of the point light is that as the light source goes farther and farther, the intensity of the light will diminish according to a certain function. The third and last light type is a spotlight, which is a kind of light that illuminates just a precise area and the light doesn't go outside of the cone of illumination. So in this video we are going to see how to create a function inside the shader that will give us the illumination for a direct directional light. As you can see, in this patch I have a couple of geometries, a sphere and a scaled cube. Then I have uh, a shader that in which we'll uh, implement our sh uh, light effect. Then I have uh, the light itself with uh, type uh, directional. And then I have a JIT world and a JIT camera. The shader for the moment is a simple pass-through shader. Let's see what do we need to write in order to create a directional light uh, simulation. As you can see, in the vertex shader I'm simply writing the texture coordinates to the built-in variable GL text chord uh, 0 and 1, because this is an array of text chords. And then I'm passing the color of our shape, that is uh, the color that we write in the color attribute of our uh, shape. I'm passing this to the built-in variable GL front color, which will allow us to access the same color inside the fragment shader. And then I'm writing the built-in variable GL position, multiplying the model view projection matrix by the vertex position, I'm passing this GL position to the subsequent stages of the render pipeline. Now we need to pass a series of varying variables from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. One of those variables is the normals, because we have to calculate the normals in the vertex shader and then pass them to the fragment shader. In this way, they will be interpolated across all the vertices of the shape. To calculate the normals, we simply multiply the built-in variable GL normal by the built-in GL normal matrix. This multiplication will give us the normal in I coordinates. The I coordinates are also called the camera coordinates or camera space or also I space, which is the coordinate space in which we are going to perform all the light calculations. The second variables that we are going to pass to the fragment shader is the position of the vertex in I coordinates. This position can be simply achieved by multiplying the GL model view matrix by the vertex itself. We don't need this variable directly to calculate the directional light, but we need it to calculate the point light. So let's pass it anyway to the fragment shader, since we are going to calculate the point light in future videos. The last varying variable that we need 
uh, is the view vector so the vector that goes from the position of the vertex in camera space to the camera itself since the camera is always considered to be at the center of our world in camera space so 0 0 0 instead of subtracting the camera position to the vertex position to obtain this vector we simply negate the vertex position which gives us the same result now let's write these varying variables also in our fragment shader so we can access them we also declared a uniform that contains a texture but we are not using it for the moment since our shader is simply passing the color white to the gl frag color built in variable let's now declare some variables inside the fragment shader that we are going to pass to our directional light function. These variables are the ambient color, the diffuse color and the specular color. We initialize them to values of zero, so we can then write them by passing them inside our directional light function. Let's now write the directional light function itself. This function will return void, but we will pass inside the function the variable ambient diffuse as specular as reference. So it means that we will write to those variables and then the values that we write inside them will be accessible also outside of the scope of the function. The first variable that we actually pass it uh, to our um, directional light function is the index i, since we could have an array of lights and we need to access some built-in variables that will give us the values from our light inside our max patch. So we need an index to actually access the light we are referring to in our array of lights. Then the second variable that we pass inside our function is the view vector from our varying variable. Not that we pass it as an in as the index, because we are not going actually to write to this variable, we are just using it to make our light calculations. And then we also pass the normals. And then the other variables that we pass in are our color values, that are for the moment initialized to zero. Note that we pass them as in out. This means that they are going to be written inside the function, and their value will continue to exist also outside of the scope of the function. We now create three float values that will store the result of our vector calculations. The first value is the diffuse intensity, so basically the intensity of the diffuse light on our shape. The second value is the specular intensity, so the intensity of the highlights. The third value is the specular contribution. I called it like that because it basically means uh, how the specular highlights are going to, to degrade according to the angle of the light with the surface. The first calculation that we need to do inside our directional light function is to calculate the half vector, which is necessary to know how much contribution the specular highlight will have on the final color of our shape. The half vector is basically the sum of the view vector with the light direction vector which in the case of the directional light is simply the light position, since all the rays of light of a directional light are considered to be parallel, so it doesn't matter where the shape is located, the directional light vector will be always equal to the position of the light. Let's note that uh, to have the calculation correct, uh, we actually have to point the view vector in the direction of the camera and the light vector in the direction of the light source. It's like if the light is going from the surface to the source of the light. This is necessary to assure that the calculations will be right. We then normalize the half vector in order to just get its direction without caring about its magnitude. Now we calculate the diffuse intensity, which tells us how much the diffuse component of the light will illuminate our shape. To calculate the diffuse intensity, we first have to calculate the dot product of the normal relative to the vertex and the direction of the light. Now, since both those vectors are normalized, this means that the dot product between those two vectors will give us the cosine of the angle that these two vectors form. The cosine of the angle between the vectors gives us the intensity of the light in that vertex. When the vectors have the same direction, the angle between them is zero, and so the cosine will be one, meaning that we have the maximum intensity. When the angle between the two vectors is greater than 90 degrees or less than minus 90 degrees, then the cosine will become negative. So this is why we take the maximum of the dot product and zero. So we will always have a positive value for our light intensity. This also means that when a vertex doesn't face the light directly, so the angle between the normal and the light is more than 90 degrees, we filter this out and we set the light intensity to zero. 
Then we calculate the specular intensity using the same method, but this time we make the dot product within the normal and the half vector, which will usually result in a bigger angle, so in a smaller value for the cosine. Then there is an if statement to filter out the specular light if the angle between the light and the normal is greater than 90 degrees. If the angle is less than 90 degrees, we raise the specular intensity to a certain power, which we can access through our uh, max interface. This will be the shininess attribute or our GCL grid shape object, for example. The bigger will be the shininess attribute, the smaller will be the area covered by the specular light. In the last part of the function, we multiply the values from our light source accessing the GL light source built-in variable which refers to our GGL light in our max interface, and we multiply the diffuse color values and the specular color values for the diffuse intensity and specular contribution. And the ambient we simply sum to the ambient value of the light source we are working with. In the main function, we compute the final color of our shape as a sum of the GL color multiplied by the diffuse uh, light value, plus the specular uh, highlight, and all of this is summed to the ambient light. Then, before passing the normals inside our function, we need to normalize them. So we create a new variable n, and we assign to this variable the normalized normal vector. Then we call our directional light function, passing 0 as an index, view vector as the view vector, n as the normal, and ambient diffuse and specular as our color values. And this is it for what regards the GLSL code. Regarding the main max patch, we simply attach the, the shader to the grid shape objects. As you can see, the grid shape objects have the auto material attribute set to zero. This is necessary so we can pass the shininess attribute to the shader uh, using the GL front material shininess built-in variable. So using the shininess attribute we can control the amount of specular highlight and using the diffuse uh, ambient and specular attribute of our lights we can control the respective colors inside the shader. The color will contribute to the final color of our shape. Every shape will have its own personal instance of the shader. So if we change a value inside the one shape, this will apply to that shape only. So this is it for this video. We saw how to create a directional light inside a shader starting from scratch. You can get the max patch and the shader in the link in the description. As the last thing, I would like to thank my Patreons because I'm really amazed at uh, how many people are actually supporting me. Well, thank you, thank you all really. That's it, people. Keep on studying, keep on experimenting, and see you on the next video. Ciao, ciao.